Hi, hi everyone. A uh, very good evening. Yeah, actually, we're supposed to have textbook discussions, but as of now, uh, I'll be postponing textbook discussions. And I'm not feeling good, so also I have this throat infection. So I'll be talking low, and in this session, we'll focus on completion of serial extraction. Serial extraction, uh, we are supposed to have virtual classroom session, but we'll do it in a textbook discussion manner. So I'll be referring some literature and I'll be covering the important points pertaining to serial extraction, right? And we'll try to complete off as soon as possible. And uh, from tomorrow, I'll let you know the updates, right? I'm actually planning not to have any live sessions tomorrow and day after tomorrow also. I'll let you know the details soon, right? So today we'll focus on serial extraction and let me know if my voice is not clear, okay? I hope it is streaming fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, goodness. I forgot my speaker in another place, so I'll be getting that soon. That's the reason why I haven't put any song initially. Hi, Srish, Neetu, Anu, Ashino, Bernice, Niharika, Prithvi, Deepak, Ananya, Komal. Hi, a oh, very good evening. Hi, Suti. Right, so. Serial extraction, I mean, this is one of the important questions for us even during undergraduation, right? So, serial extraction, so what does it mean? So, it's a timed process which has done in a specified planned manner where we're trying to extract some deciduous teeth as well as permanent teeth in order to provide space for the erupting permanent teeth and also to relieve crowding and all. So, the objective here is whenever there is a tooth length arch length deficient so when you compare the overall length of the tooth and with the arch length whenever there is some discrepancy in the sense when the arch length is deficient so in such cases we go for this serial extraction procedure and there are many indications and contraindications which we will discuss in detail so the objective here is to remove your deciduous teeth as well as your permanent teeth in a mixed dentition phase in a planned sequence so as to relieve crowding and also to relieve these kind of mal occlusions and most importantly to provide space for the erupting permanent teeth. So today we'll focus on the uh, routine textbook pattern like what are the what is serial extraction and who are the contributors for this procedure and who is considered as father of serial extraction and who coined the term serial extraction. We'll also discuss the definition, the rationale, indications, contraindications, advantages, disadvantages and most importantly the procedure the procedure of serial extraction like how exactly it's performed and what are the different methods available uh, like for example we have tweeds uh, method we have uh, nance method we have moyers method we have uh, davis method so we have different methods and what is the sequence of extraction in different methods we also i also framed one mnemonic which i'll be discussing soon so the mnemonic is very interesting like uh, for example when you're working in a company you have a managing director right so md asked me to bring a CD, a CD, a music CD, so that we can dance tonight. So that's the mnemonic. We'll uh, try to break that mnemonic and we'll see what uh, and, and how simplified manner we can remember the sequences in various methods, right? And finally, we'll also go through these indications, contraindications, and also the complications of serial extraction and why serial extraction is not that favorite uh, to be performed clinically, right? We'll discuss all these things today. And I have gone through several references. One reference being uh, the chapter management of developing um, occlusion. Uh, that's from your, okay. Dent dentistry for child and adolescents. I think I got this from, yeah. Dentistry for the Child and Adolescent, McDonald's. So I referred McDonald's, I referred ortho textbook, uh, Balaji, and also one of my professors has this notes available in, uh, in net. So I even downloaded that notes. So I'll be discussing serial extraction from these references, okay? Anyways, I'll just give you an overview and the important points pertaining to this. So serial extraction, we have different, uh, I mean, different authors have proposed this concept. We'll discuss them in detail now. Yeah, right. So, who is considered as a father of a serial extraction? You might have heard his name. 
uh, many times in, in your undergraduation. Who is considered as father of cereal extraction? Okay, let me give you options. Zellinger, uh, Zellgren, Zellgren, Paulson, Hodds, Nance. So Nance is considered as father of serial extraction and the term serial extraction was coined by again the same options. Yeah, good. So the term serial extraction, so Nance is considered as father of the serial extraction philosophy whereas Zellgren has given or coined the term serial extraction, right? And also Hodds used the term guidance of eruption, H-O-T-Z, Hodds. So I'll just type out the spelling here. Hodds has given the term guidance of eruption, right? So Zelgren has coined the term serial extraction. Nance is considered as a father of serial extraction and Hodds has suggested the term guidance of eruption okay and definition of serial extraction or guidance of eruption so it's a well planned sequence of two extraction both deciduous as well as permanent teeth in order to relieve crowding and irregularity of teeth in order to allow unerupted teeth to guide and to guide them in a proper position we'll discuss all that uh, soon and also Serial extraction can be used as an adjunct to orthodontic therapy. It's not a replacement or an alternative for fixed appliance therapy, but using serial extraction can be, I mean, it acts as an adjunct. It helps in accelerating the desired results after serial extraction followed by fixed orthodontic therapy, fixed or removal orthodontic therapy, depending upon the problem existing over there. So serial extraction is a well-planned sequence of extraction of deciduous as well as permanent teeth. If you remember, the teeth which are being extracted include, I mean, in Moyer's procedure, we even extract laterals, even though that happens spontaneously. So deciduous laterals, deciduous canines, deciduous molars, as well as permanent first premolars. So these are the teeth which are sacrificed in the process of serial extraction. It's pretty easy to remember and understand because why do you go for extraction of deciduous lateral incisors? Deciduous lateral incisors, when extracted, they provide space and they relieve crowding of permanent central and lateral incisors, right? So that's the reason why we go for extraction of deciduous laterals, that too in Moyer's procedure, which we'll discuss later. And then why do we go for extraction of deciduous canine? C. Because on extracting deciduous canine, what happens is, again, you're trying to relieve crowding in the anterior teeth. Uh, in, in case of your permanent centrals and lateral. So extraction of deciduous canines provides space and helps in relieving crowding of your anterior teeth again. The same reason, like that of your lateral incisor. And why do you go for extraction of deciduous molar? So B, C and D. Why do you go for extraction of deciduous molar? Because uh, the succedaneous tooth, uh, in place of first deciduous molar, what is the tooth you find erupting later on? It's obviously your first premolar, right? In case of your second molar, the tooth which comes later is your second premolar. So the objective or rational behind extracting the deciduous first premolar is to accelerate the eruption of your first premolar so that it can be extracted later on as a result of which there will be distal shift of your permanent canine utilizing the space which is obtained as a result of extraction of your deciduous molar. So these are the teeth which are extracted in the process of your serial extraction. Laterals and can deciduous laterals and canines to provide space and to relieve crowding of your maxillary or mandibular anterior teeth. Molars, deciduous molar, deciduous first molar is extracted in order to provide, uh, in order to accelerate the eruption of your first premolar. And after first premolar erupts, even that is extracted so that your canine shifts distally and occupies the space which is created by your this extraction of your deciduous first molar. So this is the overview of the serial extraction and the sequence varies. Depending upon the method, uh, each author has proposed their own sequence. So we'll, we'll go through the sequence also. 
we have this combinations of CD4, D4C, BCD4. So we have different combinations for which we have framed one mnemonic as well, right? So before that, yes, yes, I know it's introduced and popularized by Zelgren. Yeah. Hi, a very good evening, Pritika. So as we discussed, the rationale behind the serial extraction procedure is very important. Serial extraction, it's a positive interceptive orthodontic procedure. It's not preventive, it is interceptive orthodontic procedure. Generally applied where supporting bone is less than the tooth material. That's what we discussed. I mean, when there is arch length deficiency compared to the mesodistal widths of the teeth, then we go for the serial extraction. If the arch length deficiency is less than 4 mm, then we don't go for serial extraction. If it is more than 4 mm or more than 4, 5 or 6 mm, we uh, go for serial extraction. So this is one of the important indications which we will discuss again later. So as we discussed, extraction of primary canine eliminates crowding of permanent incisors. Extraction of first premolars before eruption of permanent canines in second premolars results in distal eruption of canines and may bring about spontaneous closure of spaces. You remember the average width of a premolar is 7 to 8 mm. So when you are trying to remove premolars on both the sides in the same arch, you are creating a space of 14 to 16 mm. After this space is created, there is obviously some drifting of heads and teeth. As a result, 4 to 6 mm of space is lost overall, 2 to 3 mm per each quadrant. So 4 to 6 mm of space is lost because of the distal migration or mesial migration of the teeth existing over there. However, out of total 16 mm, 14 to 16 mm, if 4 to 6 mm is lost, the rest 10 mm is available to relieve crowding and other malocclusions, right? So premolar extraction provides a space of around 14 to 16 mm in the entire arch, right? So after serial extraction, incisors tend to drift lingually and posterior teeth tend to drift mesially to ex some extent, leading to 2 to 3 mm of space closure in each quadrant. This is very important. So there is, I mean, in the complications, we'll be discussing that again. Because of extraction of these premolars and deciduous canines, there will be lingual tipping or palatal tipping of your central incisor, central and lateral incisors. Because of this lingual or palatal tipping, there is deep bite. And also there is mesial tipping or mesial migration of your molars. And that can be prevented by using a lingual holder or a NANS appliance. We have different appliances again available. So there are certain complications also. There can be mesial tipping of your first molar, even mesial tipping of your third molar because of extraction of premolars. Lingual tipping of your central incisors. Because of lingual tipping, there can be deep bite. Even deep bite is possible as and it can be considered as a complication of your serial extractions. We'll discuss the complications again separately. So this is the rationale behind going for serial extraction, right? To create space, basically to create space so that uh, to relieve crowding of anterior teeth and also to relieve malocclusions when especially there is a discrepancy between the tooth dimensions mesodistally and the arch length. We have different analysis which are available to have this estimation between your tooth length and arch length uh, discrepancies, right? If the discrepancy is more than 4 mm, or 5 to 7 mm according to some literature then we go for serial extraction if the discrepancy is less then there is no need for going for serial extraction so what are the various ideas? this is very important because you need to know what should be the indications and contraindications for serial extraction obviously remember it's very simple the indications for serial extraction include the following class 1 uh, malocclusions any skeletal malocclusion uh, we do not indicate uh, this serial extraction. So any kind of skeletal malocclusions like class 2s, class 3s, mm -hmm. serial extraction is contraindicated. So serial extractions are mainly indicated whenever there is minimal overjet, minimal overbite, class 1 kind of malocclusion. There shouldn't be any skeletal disproportions, there shouldn't be any abnormal muscle activities. And also, in case of when there is a relatively discrepancy existing between arch length and tooth length which we'll discuss again uh, in, in the next subsequent section so the ideal conditions for serial, serial extraction are very important right so most importantly apart from indications contraindications where you can expect several questions as well 
So all of the following are indications except or all of the following are contraindications of serial extraction except. So the contraindications include severe class 2 and class 3 skeletal malocclusions because even if you create space under these circumstances, that's not going to relieve the kind of malocclusion. We need to have some surgical approach or use of other extra oral appliances if needed, right? So serial extractions are contraindicated in case of skeletal class 2 and class 3 malocclusions. And also dental class 2 and class 3 malocclusions. In case of congenitally absent or missing second premolars, there is no point in going for serial extraction. Already when their tooth is missing, you'll obviously have some space there, right? So congenitally absent or missing second premolars or even unilateral congenital absence of teeth. In cases of extensive caries of first molars, we are obviously will go for extraction of first permanent molars in case of extensive caries. Serial extraction is contraindicated. And finally, cleft lip and cleft palate cases. So even in cleft lip and cleft palate cases, serial extraction is contraindicated. So all the points which have been mentioned, you can just make a note of them in your customized notes. It will be easy for you to go through uh, these points later on. Okay. And along with this, abnormal tooth size, abnormal uh, root morphology, dilacerations and germination. So all these also can be considered as contraindications of serial extraction. And presence of deep bite, open bite, cross bite, rotations, gross mal positions cannot be treated using a serial extraction. Obviously, in such cases, serial extraction is contraindicated. And if arch length deficiency is less than 4 mm, serial extraction is contraindicated. So these are some of the important indications and contraindications. I hope you can understand when I say arch length deficiency. Assume that the mesodistal width of your maxillary teeth are based on various analysis if it is 24 mm. You can view the deciduous teeth mesially and I mean uh, clinically and the unerpted teeth through radiographs, right? So you'll take multiple radiographs, you have different analysis, you'll estimate the mesodistal widths of all your teeth. For example, in case of maxilla, it is around 24 mm. And the arch length clinically seems to be only 16 mm. So there is a lot of discrepancy between the length of your tooth, mesodistal lengths of tooth and also between your lengths of your arch. So when you have this discrepancy, if this, if this discrepancy between arch length and the mesodistal widths of your tooth is greater than 4 mm, then you go for serial extraction. If it is less than 4 mm, uh, there is no, I mean, there is no necessity to go for serial extraction to create additional space as the discrepancy is very minimal comparatively, right? And moreover, the patient grows and because of jaw growth and all this less than 4 mm discrepancy can be covered up gradually. Yeah, contraindications when you remember indications, I mean both are like opposite. So indications you have this uh, class 1, uh, I mean all your class 1 occlusion, angles class 1 occlusion and also minimum over jet, over bite and other indications would be no skeletal disproportions like absence of skeletal disproportions, absence of abnormal or aberrant muscle activity and minimal overjet and overbite as we discussed previously and a true relatively severe uh, hereditary tooth size jaw size discrepancy. Peri perimeter arch deficiency as we discussed arch length deficiency less than uh, 4 mm it's a contraindication greater than 4 mm uh, it's an indication. So indications arch length deficiency minimum overjet, minimum overbite and you also have this lack of skeletal disproportions, no aberrant muscle activities and also you have this most importantly orthognathic facial uh, pattern or profile where you have skeletal uh, malocclusion, class 1 skeletal malocclusion. So all this come under indications. Contraindications would be opposite. When you have this class 2 and class 3 skeletal malocclusions, when you have arch length deficiency of less than 4 mm, when there is overjet, overbite, abnormal tooth morphologies, abnormal root morphologies, and congenitally absent uh, second premolar. So whenever teeth are absent congenitally, obviously some space will be provided, right? In in the place of those missing teeth, the tree, uh, in case of malocclusions, the teeth can be drifted naturally. And also you have this uh, grossly decayed permanent first molars, right? So these are some of the contraindications. If you want, I'll just read out for you so that you can make a note of them. Yeah. Ideal conditions or indications include uh, perimeter arch length deficiency, minimal overjet, minimal overbite, no skeletal disproportions, no aberrant muscle activity, orthognathic facial pattern or class 1 maxillomandibular allodental protrusion, 
Contraindications severe class 2 and class 3, skeletal malocclusions, congenitally absent or missing second premolars, extensive caries of permanent first molars, cleft clip and cleft palate cases, unilateral congenital absence of teeth, abnormal tooth size, shape, color, presence of deep bite, open bite, cross bite rotations, arsenal deficiency less than 4 mm and missing third molars are contraindications because even if third molars is missing that uh, space can be used or utilized by the teeth for natural drifting right so missing third molars arch length may be gained on the posterior end of the alar trough so these are some of your indications and contraindications right we'll just go through the procedure which is very important before that i'll just uh, take a two minute break Yeah, depending upon the analysis Ashina, you can estimate the mesodistal width of your tooth. If the mesodistal width of your teeth is, for example, as I said, if it is 24 mm by counting, either through clinically or through radiographs, if the mesodistal width of all your teeth combined is 24 mm, if the arch length clinically is 23 mm or 24 mm or 25 mm, then it's an ideal case scenario where there won't be any crowding or malocclusion, isn't it? But on the other hand, if the mesodistal width of your teeth is 24 and the arch length is 18 mm, 16 mm or 14 mm, it means the arch is small enough, not able to accommodate all your permanent teeth, right? So in such cases, we go for serial extraction when the deficiency or discrepancy between your mesodistal width of your teeth and the arch length is greater than 5 to 7 mm or greater than 4 mm. And depending upon the literature, we have different values given here. According to Balaji, it's mentioned as 5 to 7 mm. According to one reference, it's mentioned as 4 mm. Anyways, more or less, it's around 4 to 7 mm. Yes, more than 4 mm. Obviously, there is a lot of discrepancy, so we need to go for serial extraction. That's true. Less than 4 mm is a contraindication. More than 4 mm is a indication obviously that's what i said when you know one aspect either you try to master either indications or contraindications you'll obviously know the other one easily So what are the various stages in serial extraction so these stages are very important already we discussed we had an overview of this at the beginning <clears throat> it's not indicated in skeletal malocclusions class 2 or class 3 because i mean when you go for serial extractions obviously the amount of space which you create is not going to relieve your malocclusion skeletal malocclusions it has something to do with the improper alignment or improper growth and development of your maxilla and mandible we need other procedures rather than serial extraction serial extraction only is indicated whenever there is malocclusion related to your teeth but not your skeleton i hope you got my point so when you go for when you have the skeletal malocclusions then your serial extraction is not going to treat the problem yeah so stages in serial extraction first Extraction of primary lateral incisors, even though this is not performed in all the methods, in Moyer's method it's mentioned as we can, uh, I mean initially we go for extraction of lateral incisors. Because uh, I know that's a very common question, anyways that's a good one you asked, there is nothing like perfect occlusion. That's why uh, any occlusion is considered as mal occlusion because no one has this ideal occlusion. So the occlusion which we have, we get accustomed to it. So any kind of occlusion is considered to be mal occlusion. So there is nothing like ideal occlusion existing. Because uh, we cannot categorize and say this is ideal occlusion because even though you have some kind of mal occlusion, uh, you, you, we get used to it, we get habituated to it. I think we discussed the same point previously also in one of the chapters called occlusion. Uh, so we get accustomed to the uh, existing occlusion, right? So there is nothing like perfect occlusion. Exactly, burn Skeletal mal occlusion in the sense maxillary, uh, maxillary excess or deficiency or mandibular excess or deficiency. That's true. 
So stages in serial extraction. So first we'll go through all the stages in general and then we'll go through the methods, right? So once we can focus on these stages, the other methods available becomes easy for us to understand. So first extraction of primary lateral incisors. So obviously why do we go for extraction of primary lateral incisors? So to relieve crowding in case of your anteriors, especially central incisors, right? Whenever there is crowding, when you extract these laterals, deciduous, there can be relief in crowding of these permanent central. So extraction of primary laterals incisors as permanent central incisors erupt if necessary. So this happens spontaneously. Usually, in a natural case scenario, we need not really extract. Usually, laterals get uh, exfoliated the moment the centrals are uh, emerging into the soft tissue, right? So, extraction of primary lateral incisors as permanent central incisors erupt if necessary. Most often, this occurs spontaneously. Coming to extraction of primary canines, which is done at an age of 8 to 9 years. Please make a note of these points. These are very important. So, extraction of primary canines is done as the permanent laterals erupt. It's very simple. As the centrals, as the permanent central incisors are erupting, extraction of primary laterals is indicated. As permanent lateral incisors are erupting, extraction of deciduous canine is indicated. And this extraction of deciduous canine is done at an age group of eight to nine years and performed to allow eruption and alignment of permanent incisors, centrals as well as laterals. So obviously when you extract less deciduous canine, you will have more space for the permanent centrals <coughs> and for the permanent laterals to align in a proper position without any crowding. However, this is very important. This can be considered as a complication also. Make a note of it. The procedure that is extraction of deciduous canine may lead to lingual tipping of your central incisors. So the procedure may result in lingual tipping of lower incisors as well as increase in the bite. And this procedure does not cause much problem. See, when you compare maxillary deciduous canine extraction with mandibular deciduous canine extraction, mandibular permanent centrals are more prone for lingual tipping because of extraction of deciduous canines. This has been observed clinically. So because of the lingual tipping of lower centrals, what happens is, for example, this is your upper central, how can I show? So this is our upper central which are inclined in this direction. Lower centrals will be like this, right? So whenever there is lingual tipping of your lower centrals, so lingual tipping leads to deepening of bite. So there is increased overbite because of lingual tipping and this is a complication of serial extraction. I hope it's clear, right? So because of lingual tipping, after extraction of deciduous canine, because of lingual tipping of the central incisors, there can be deepening of bite or bite closure. That's pertinent extraction of primary canines and then extraction of primary first molars. So that is D. So 6 to 12 months before the normal exfoliation time, we go for extraction of deciduous molars. What happens if you remove them soon or too early? If you remove the deciduous tooth or any tooth without proper planning too early, there can be space closure. The same teeth or opposing teeth will migrate and there will be like the procedure fails ultimately. So the extraction of a particular tooth, it's very important. There has to be proper timing. So deciduous molars are extracted just 6 to 12 months before their normal exfoliation time so that we can accelerate the eruption of permanent or no need to say permanent but first premolar. So deciduous um, first molars are extracted 6 to 12 months before their normal exfoliation time in order to accelerate the eruption of your first premolars. This is very important, right? So that uh, so that once your first premolar is erupting, then we extract that also as a result of which mesial, I mean the canines will be drifting distally. They will be, we are, we are in fact in the process guiding the eruption of your canines. Remember, serial extraction is not just about creating spaces and to relieve malocclusion, but also helps in guiding the eruption. Hence, Hodge has coined the term guidance of eruption. Isn't it? So extraction of primary first molars is done 6 to 12 months before their normal exfoliation time. This is done to influence the first premolars to erupt ahead of permanent canines so that they can be extracted and permit canines to move distally into space. And the timing is usually 9 to 10 years of age. So deciduous canines are removed at 8 to 9 years of age. Permanent, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, deciduous first molars are extracted in age of 9 to 10, right? So this timing is very important. If mandibular canine 
usually if you observe the eruption timings we have discussed that and it's difficult to remember till now if you observe the eruption timings of your first premolar and canine first premolar erupts early compared to canine in case of maxilla however canine erupts comparatively early than your mandibular uh, premolar so you have this alteration in time in case of maxilla see the intention here is to make sure that uh, you extract this deciduous molar so that you can accelerate the eruption of your premolar ahead of your canine but that's possible only in case of your maxilla where premolar erupts before your canine but in mandible mandibular canine erupts before premolar so you need to make that uh, make a note of that point so if mandibular canine is erupting before mandibular first premolar which is usually the case in such cases what do we do mandibular deciduous first molars are extracted and after extracting them enucleation of the tooth bud of first premolar is done this is very important so in case of lower arch if mandibular canine is erupting before mandibular first premolar we have two options one option is extracting deciduous molar followed by surgically enucleation of tooth bud of your first premolar however when you are removing this tooth bud of your first premolar there can be alveolar defect reason we also discussed this previously whatever alveolar process which you see we have a basal bone and alveolar process right alveolar process so these processes will lodge your teeth why do you see this process because the teeth erupts we see this process if the teeth is absent you don't find alveolar process if the teeth is enucleated during its developing stage itself there is failure of alveolar growth so the complication associated with removal or enucleation of premolar tooth bud is there can be alveolar defect later on so that's one of the complications again as we'll be discussing these complications later uh, just uh, telling you in the context the other option is whenever mandibular canine erupts ahead of your premolar so we have this option of enucleating your premolar but the other option here we have is mandibular deciduous first molars are extracted first and 6 months later mandibular second uh, molar is also extracted so mandibular deciduous first molars are extracted after 6 months mandibular second molars that is deciduous molars are extracted unerupted premolars move distally into the alveolar bone as the canine erupts and when first premolar erupts it is extracted and a lingual arch wire may be provided to prevent the first permanent molars from moving or from migrating mesially simple so our intention is here remove your laterals remove your deciduous laterals canines and deciduous first molars followed by removal of your premolars all this is being done to create some space we are removing first premolars to create some space isn't it so we have an issue here laterals and canines when you remove that's fine but when you are extracting deciduous first molar the intention here is to accelerate the eruption of your premolar ahead of your canine right so that premolar also can be extracted and canine can be distalized can be guided to erupt distally this is all fine in maxilla but in mandible we have an issue where mandibular canine erupts ahead of your premolar so what happens when mandibular canine erupts ahead of your premolars so mandibular canines may drift distally and the premolar remains uh, lodged inside the alveolar bone without proper eruption again we'll have a complication it will be challenging for you to remove or extract premolars once the permanent canine drifts distally so what we do is we have two options so first we'll go with extraction of deciduous molars as usual followed by enucleation of your premolar but enucleation of premolar can lead to alveolar defect so to overcome this we have another alternative where we remove deciduous molar first followed by removal of your deciduous second molar so that the premolar is guided to erupt distally because of the pressure of your canine so once the premolar is erupted then it is extracted ultimately and the amount of space that's available is utilized by the erupting canine and also the molar which is present distally might be erupting into the mesial area so the molar mesial tipping is prevented by your lingual arch i hope uh, it's a bit complicated here but it's very simple provided you understand the reason behind what we have been discussing right so this completes the various stages in serial extraction i'll just hold on for 2 minutes you have you need any uh, specific clarity pertaining to this let me know i'll clarify that for you once again
Yes, Bernice. Deep bite or over bite, they're all same. Over closure, deep bite, over bite, they're all the same. Or collapse of bite. Yes, I assure you, you say angles class 1 molar occlusion has class 1 molar relationship, which is normal. But molar occlusion is due to bimaxillary protrusion. Yeah, again, we have different types of molar occlusions. You have uh, your allodental molar occlusions or skeletal molar occlusions. Yes. Okay, you need any clarification regarding this test because these tests are very important because uh, while extracting every tooth we need to know the reason why we are extracting it. So once you have that clarity it will be easy for you to compare later different methods available for cetal extraction. Yeah. Yes, yeah, second premolar does erupt normally only on anio. Yes, so we go through the indications which we discussed early, you'll understand where you'll go with uh, serial extraction, where it's indicated. Yes, Bernice, I mean, uh, whenever mandibular canine erupts ahead of your premolar, in such cases what we do is, after uh, extraction of your deciduous first molar, we go for enucleation of your premolar, which I think you're all, uh, you have understood. But we have a second method because enucleation leads to alveolar defect. We have a second method where we remove deciduous first molar followed by removal of a deciduous second molar. As a result, what happens is the canine erupts early and because of er early eruption of canine, even the premolars will erupt later and they will be drifted into the distal space which is being created by extraction of your deciduous first and second molar. So the premolars uh, erupt more distally and ultimately they are extracted and the space is utilized by your canines as usual for distal drifting. But we have an issue where the permanent molars might be drifting mesially because you are extracting your second deciduous molar, your permanent first molar can be drifting mesially, right? So to, to prevent that drifting, we have this NANS appliance, different appliances can be used, lingual holding arch, etc. So that's the second alternative method which has been proposed in cases of mandible where mandibular canine erupts ahead of your premolar. Uh, Niharika, we have, I mean, we often use the term permanent premolar, but it's not necessary. Premolar would be sufficient because we don't have premolars in your deciduous dentition, right? Yeah, premolar, see, ultimately you're extracting premolars, permanent premolars, as we discussed in the rational, if you remember. Each premolar has a width of around 7 to 8 mm on one side. First quadrant, 7 to 8 mm. Second quadrant, another 7 to 8 mm. So, entire arch you have uh, mesodistal width of premolars equal to almost 14 to 16 mm so you are having a space creation of 14 to 16 mm in the entire arch so which can be used up by the erupting teeth for relieving any kind of malocclusion crowding or any kind of uh, lingual dipping etc so any disproportions existing between the teeth can be utilized and they will utilize this available space in order to erupt normally in fact the same, uh, I mean, the same question even Devi has proposed because Devi and other scientists were not in favor of extracting permanent teeth. They're not in favor of extracting permanent teeth. So what they have advised is remove deciduous canines, remove deciduous molars and just wait. Because the growth in children, that's a very good question in fact, Niharika, because no one would sacrifice a permanent tooth, right? So what Devi has proposed is Rather than going for extraction of premolars, just extract deciduous canines, deciduous molars first and then wait. And see, because in most of the cases, as obvious it is, there is great uh, improvement in growth and development. Because the problem with uh, these malocclusions is, when you see this kind of malocclusions, whenever there is inadequate growth and development of your jaws, right? But in children, the growth spurts and all, they can lead to rapid growth of maxilla and mandible at some point of time. 
especially during the puberty time 8 to 13 years age isn't it so what devi has proposed is just extract deciduous teeth wait and see if at all the growth is not favorable based on the clinical observation and all then in only in such cases where you feel that there is a still only chance for malocclusion there is a chance for uh, this disproportionate arrangement of teeth then you go for premolars only then premolars have to be sacrificed but in most of the cases premolars need not be sacrificed as their permanent teeth and also because of growth uh, modifications and all the jaws will accommodate all the teeth normally and i'll just read out the statement given by devi and it's very interesting occasionally I've seen that somewhere yeah Devi uh, okay Devil Devil agrees that growth is often unpredictable no one can be certain that it will be unfavorable to the development of malocclusion many children with arch length inadequacy have spectacular growth when least expected and may be treated successfully without sacrificing permanent teeth so these are the statements given in your uh, mcdonald so devil agrees that growth is often unpredictable and no one can be certain that it will be unfavorable to development of occlusion and many children with arch length deficiency have spectacular growth when least expected and may be treated successfully even without sacrificing permanent teeth that is your premolars so premolars are extracted with the intention to create space so that your permanent canines will be drifted distal right only when indicated even though it's an unpredictable uh, scenario how can you know whether there is going to be malocclusion or not serial extraction has a limited place in dental practice and requires a regular reassessment to determine whether the serial extraction plan should be continued or not the frequently occurring complications associated with serial extractions include closed bite or deep bite lingually tipped lower incisors distally tipped canines mesially tipped second premolars none of which is desirable so also in this process we have seen some of the complications of serial extraction deep bite lingual tipping of centrals mesial tipping of premolars right and also even mesial tipping of first molars is possible right these are all not desired in case of your occlusion isn't it so closed bite lingually tipped uh, incisors distally tipped canines and mesially tipped second premolars anyways so that's the reason why we usually it's indicated that premolars have to be extracted right i mean if you go into the details you'll understand the fact that it's better not to sacrifice this teeth yes only in case of mandible right i mean the two alternatives which i mentioned it's only in case of mandible yes exactly preeti cd4 for if necessary has proposed a sequence but uh, premolar should be preserved as much as possible only if necessary then you go for this i mean uh, prithvi the premolar which is being extracted for your orthodontic treatment that's different again we're talking about serial extraction here there premolars in case of a fixed therapy whenever they find that uh, i mean there has to be space creation to uh, recline your teeth or to alter the positions of your teeth right so uh, in that case scenario they go for extraction of permanent i mean premolars that too you know adult patient but here we're talking about serial extractions which is done in mixed dentition period between age group of 8 to 13 years so that in this age group we have this deciduous teeth also right so this is again a totally different concept we're talking about serial extraction but the question which you asked is related to i mean adults adolescents or adults where they go for fixed orthodontic therapy for which space creation has to be done right in children uh, you have this space already uh, you have erupting teeth developing teeth developing uh, jaws etc but in case of your adults how can you create additional space you create that by extracting your first premolars 
Yeah, right. So we'll discuss various alternative methods of serial extraction before going through these alternative methods. We have a mnemonic. So just write down this mnemonic and see how it works out for you. The mnemonic is our MD. I assume that you're working somewhere, you have your MD boss. Your MD has asked for a music CD so that you can dance tonight. I mean, if you can understand my writing, you can just copy the same here. Or let me just read off. Our MD has asked for a music CD so that we can dance tonight. Okay? So, in, in, the, in this sentence, highlight MD, CD, dance tonight. Highlight these words. MD, CD, dance tonight. MD, M stands for Moyers analysis, D for Deves method, uh, no, not analysis, I'm sorry, Moyers method, M stands for Moyers method, D stands for Deves method, and CD, MD has asked for CD, right? So CD is nothing but your uh, C, D, and 4, that's the sequence. I mean, you often get confused between CD4 and D4C. To eliminate that confusion, we have actually done this. So MD, asked for CD. So in Moyer's uh, method and in your Deves method, CD4 is the sequence. That is deciduous canine followed by deciduous first molar followed by uh, your premolar, first premolar, right? So CD4. So MD, CD. So M for Moyer's, D for Deves. He's asked for music CD where C is your deciduous canine, a D for your deciduous first molar followed by 4. Yeah, thanks Bernice. So highlight the words MDCD and dance tonight. In the second part of sentence we have dance tonight, right? Dance tonight. So dance, D and C, you can see the reversal of order. Compared to CD in D, dance you have D followed by C. So the sequence is D4C. Tonight means T and Tweeds and Nance method. I mean that's the best possible mnemonic which I could uh, get uh, based on this. I'm sorry if it is complicated. MDCD is comparatively easy, right? So if you can remember one part, the other part will be easy anyway. So you have confusion whether it is CD4 or D4C, right? So to eliminate that, we can use this. So MD, Moyers and Deves. C, D and 4. That is the extraction sequence for serial extraction procedure. And dance tonight. Uh, dance, you, you can see D and C in that, right? So D and C. So D, 4, C. And tonight, T, N. Tonight, you have T, N, N. T is for tweeds and is for a Nance method. At least if, if you find the second part of sentence difficult, the first part is comparatively easy, right? Yeah. Your MD has asked for a CD so that you can dance tonight. If someone asks you or if you have a question like what is the extraction sequence in case of serial extraction procedure, is it CD4 or D4C? No, you will not have any confusion, right? Yeah. And I don't think I need to elaborate these methods, right? Anyways, I'll just go through that in brief. First, we'll start with Tweed's method. In Tweed's method, extraction sequence as we have seen is D4C. At 8 years, all deciduous first molars are removed so that early eruption of first premolar happens and deciduous canine is maintained in, in case of Tweed's method to retard the eruption of permanent canine. And after 4 to 4, 10 months, the first premolars are extracted as well to relieve. So, Niharika, to be specific to your question, Premolars are extracted to relieve crowding in anterior teeth and to allow canine to erupt posteriorly into the space created by extraction of deciduous first molar. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Abhishek, tonight T and N, T for Tweed, N for Nance. So you have four methods uh, basically, right? Tweed, Nance, Moyers, and Devis method. <clears throat> so in case of device method we have this sequence of C, D and 4. So deciduous canines are extracted first at the age of 8 to 9 to allow the 
alignment of incisors properly and later deciduous first molars are extracted to allow the early eruption of first premolar. Finally, first premolars are removed to relieve crowding in anterior region and to provide space for your permanent canine. Nance method, Moyers method, I hope it's all clear. But we have a small modification here. Moyers method, we have an extraction sequence as we discussed. <coughs> I'm sorry. CD4, that's true. But Moyers method, the extraction sequence is B, C, D, and 4. It's not just CD4, it is B, C, D, and 4. So indicated for crowding in central incisor region. So whenever there is crowding in central incisor region, so we go for extraction of deciduous laterals. So B is an additional feature which is added here in Moyers method. That's the only exception you have. You can just make a note of it. <clears throat> what is that cruise method mini? Can you please elaborate? Okay. So, what are the advantages of serial extraction? And what are the disadvantages and complications? We'll just conclude with that. Eruption advantages include obviously it allows your unerupted and erupted teeth to be guided into proper occlusion, reduces severity of malocclusion but doesn't eliminate malocclusion. So one of you asked me like why don't we go for this procedure in skeletal malocclusion. It only reduces the intensity of malocclusion rather than completely eliminating it. And as a result, whenever you're going for a mechanical uh, mechanotherapy or fixed appliance therapy later on, the duration of that therapy would obviously decrease because you're reducing the intensity of your malocclusion. Remember, serial extraction doesn't eliminate the need for fixed or other orthodontic appliance therapy. It's only used as an adjunct. That's very important. Reduces treatment time, no TMJ problem, no pain, less discomfort, cost of treatment reduced, all this is fine, but most importantly, Make a note of it. Retention is usually not needed because whenever you go for any alignment of your teeth, you need some kind of retention, right? There can be rebound phenomena. But here, retention is not necessary as the teeth are being guided physiologically or naturally and muscular forces are those which are guiding the movement of teeth. Hence, retention of the teeth. I mean, for example, retention in the sense you have tried to move the teeth using serial extraction procedure or guided the teeth to erupt in the proper positions, right? So when they are in those uh, proper positions or desired positions, you need not really worry about retention because the teeth are being moved physiologically, isn't it? Uh, by the muscular forces and all, by the occlusal forces and all, rather than pure mechanical force. So retention is not a matter of concern, which is another major advantage for your serial extraction and disadvantages obviously extracting teeth in a in children it's a horrifying procedure for i mean child takes it in a very negative way right it's a horrifying uh, experience for him obviously and it's a long-term procedure it has to be carefully planned it has to be planned carefully it has to be customized depending upon the extraction seat because you don't know which two therapists when you can only just expect or anticipate, but you don't exactly that at a particular time a tooth erupts, right? So it's difficult to manage such cases. I mean, we cannot really predict the eruption of all the teeth. And moreover, the eruption of teeth in one quadrant differs from, the, from that of other quadrant. Even we have these challenges as well. It's a long-term procedure, physiological, uh, psychological trauma to the patient because of multiple extractions. If extractions are carried out, also we discussed that deciduous molar is extracted 6 to 12 months before the normal exfoliation schedule. If you erupt them too early, there can be space loss, there can be delay in eruption of your permanent successors and you know what, sometimes when you remove your deciduous first molar, it might not stimulate the eruption of your premolars. So we can have these disadvantages. And in case of your lower teeth, which we have discussed extensively previously, lower permanent canines may erupt ahead of your first premolar into the space left by deciduous first molar, causing impaction of first premolar, making the extraction of first premolar very, very difficult. Right? And serial extraction doesn't mean that you can exclude a mechanical therapy. It's only an adjuvant. And there can be tendency to deepen the bite. 
tendency to deepen the bite because of lingual tipping of incisors is another disadvantage abnormal tongue thrusting into the extraction space etc right so these are some of the drawbacks or disadvantages and coming to complications already we discussed in a very simplified manner as given in your mcdonald there can be lingual tipping of your incisors there can be a deep bite there can be distal drifting of or distal tipping of your canines as the canines are being erupted distally there can be distal tipping of your canines or mesial tipping of your first molars so all these are undesirable complications associated with serial extractions and coming to various application appliances used with serial extraction it's mentioned that i mean to prevent the mesial migration of your uh, permanent molars we can use the lingual arch and also we can use maxillary transpalatal holding arch lingual arch in case of your lower arch transpalatal nans arch in case of your upper arch to maintain the position of your molars because you are going for extraction of deciduous molars right deciduous first molar so there can be a chance for mesial drifting of your second molar as well as your permanent first molar to hold the permanent molars in the position we can use lingual holding arch or we can use transpalatal or nans arch and also we, we can use holly supplants to decrease deep bite we can incorporate a bite plane and alter the bite of the patient and also helps in aligning the rotated incisors also helps in decreasing the overjet so these are some of the appliances which are used in conjunction with serial extraction so that's in a very brief manner so this completes our serial extraction anyways we're supposed to do a virtual classroom session i'm sorry i couldn't really make it but definitely uh, i felt like i needed to take a break a very short break so for two or three days i'll not be coming online maximum so i'm uh, having this detoxifying method i'm i'm just done with this smartphones and all already we had this discussion yesterday so i'll be out i'll i'll be offline for the next two days or three days maximum and i'll try to come back with uh, renewed and uh, rejuvenated uh, as much as possible and anyways i'll try to have a saturday's discussion we'll have it on sunday if possible i'll let you know all the details through whatsapp update group and you have any questions pertaining to serial extraction i'll be taking them sure yeah because i felt like i've been uh, i mean i felt like uh, psychologically i'm just having uh, uh, this kind of a challenge to cope up with all these things and that's why even i couldn't really share the material also with you because uh, too many things uh, it's becoming more of a challenge so <laughs> i'm not going to give up yes yes actually in fact uh, goa trip was like i wanted to distress myself but it just added up to my stress because uh, two days uh, i had to balance between the work and uh, the family time there so that further led to saturation so even in uh, goa and all i have been doing this live session i have been working i have been giving access and all uh, i was just out you know you have a bulb where the fuse is lost <laughs> that's the kind of scenario i'm in right now so uh, moreover i have my parents in another place <laughs> i've been i'm done with that many <laughs> <laughs> i've been i've been to goa and i came back uh, day before yesterday itself but somehow <laughs> anyways i'll be in touch through whatsapp and i'll be in touch through mails as much as possible so we'll do with uh, textbook discussions for sure we're not going to skip these uh, topics that's for sure so i'll be sharing i uh, got this photocopies of the textbook discussions also but the thing is i'm not ready so i'll share the stuff as soon as possible we'll try to have moreover we have some ample time so i also try to alter the schedule slightly for your benefit and try to incorporate more and more live sessions if possible and also we need to focus on giving recorded videos right so that's why i'm i'm trying to pl plan a break two or three day break and we'll come up again with a new schedule and i mean with a renewed energy uh, possible and also you have any questions i mean entire communication will be fine as usual to be normal you can drop your questions anything is fine i'll reply as soon as possible but if at all if there is any emergency you can you can drop a whatsapp message also right so we'll again see you i mean by the way tomorrow we have diwali i, I would love to do a session on diwali so i just can't uh, I, i i just can't resist myself anyways if possible i'll come i'll let you know 
uh, but not with the textbook discussion because we are having some general issues also i mean i've been getting few mails regarding uh, like how to overcome over uses of smartphones and how to maintain cool so we have we have a lot many general issues also so i'm planning to uh, take some general sessions maybe tomorrow and day after tomorrow to distress uh, myself in the process and also to have something meaningful discussion with all of you we'll try to have uh, some general discussions if possible anyways i'll let you know everything through whatsapp update and also through mail and as tomorrow is a diwali festival of lights so we had this brief discussion in our uh, college also and uh, it's not just celebrating diwali but celebrating the spirit of diwali which is victory of good or evil right so it's a victory of optimism or pessimism it's a victory of right or wrong isn't it so please do keep that in mind and enjoy your festival and wish you all a happy diwali and thank you so much for your wishes right i'll just stay online for another few minutes if you have any questions pertaining to this topic uh, i'll i'll i i can uh, get them clarified right and if not we can just break conclude yeah regarding grantus schedule yes we are going to do that preeti uh, just give me two or three days by the end of weekend i'll just give you some clarity or uh, like when you are planning this grantus obviously we'll postpone them we'll give you more time for preparation maybe from november second week we'll have this grantus i'll let you know as soon as possible yeah mini you mentioned about crevice method something i'm not exactly sure of that i mean uh, if you can get some information please drop it in a your a morning group or update group i'll just uh, know and if at all it's uh, very important we can even discuss i think it's devis method uh, i'm not sure if the spelling is right or not anyways go through that mini and let us know thank you yes yes meditation as yes, meditation and uh, smart uh, smartphone uses these two uh, will be the main topics of discussion in the coming days we'll do them soon yeah thanks surubhi and hope you got the indications right which you asked previously <laughs> so again pritika you say we have an app come okay is it available in uh, app store i mean apple app store or android versions yeah we'll try that pritika thank you <laughs> right Uh, Ashina, I don't have my family now. In, in uh, see now, right now, my wife is uh, with my sister-in-law with the kiddo, so they're enjoying there. So I'm alone in my house right now. So I'm going to my hometown so that I can spend some time with my parents also. I mean, they have been literally forcing me to come and to uh, spend time because forcing in the sense uh, they have been missing me even I'm. Uh, the same i don't have uh, somya here so even i am feeling lonely for the past two days maybe that's another reason why uh, i appear to be comparatively uh, dull i was literally reluctant to have a live session today but somehow i pushed myself i don't know how it has gone uh, anyways don't worry all the topics which i completed the key points again will have discussion in one way or other in form of mcq discussions or in in form of your virtual classrooms or e classes so you need not really worry so whatever best i can do i will do right yes ashina thank you for your concern sure we'll consider your suggestion yes sir i literally that's what i feel right now i feel like i, I should switch off everything anything i mean uh, smartphones laptop everything and just uh, go but i can't do it uh, i'm just in this mesh Uh, not mess but mesh i'm talking about the matrix so we have week day weekly test that's the reason why i selected friday and uh, thursday to distress myself again saturday and sunday will be having this weekly test discussions uh, whatsapp discussions and all right it's available in ios also thanks prithika 
It's called as calm, C A L M. Okay, I'll try. No, we have holiday tomorrow. But I'll be taking extended leave uh, for the weekend. Yes, sir, she know. Oh, okay, Surabhi, thank you. You welcome, Preeti. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so Ashina has officially declared uh, Diwali uh, vacation in our PTB Academy for two to three days. Yeah, sure. Obviously, I don't have an alternative because if I force myself, again uh, the quality would be uh, gradually be diminished, isn't it? So I don't want that to happen. So that's the reason why I, I, I say I never, I, I always hate to postpone things, but for the first time after starting these live sessions, by the way, this is the 110th or 115th live session. It's the first time I'm telling you we'll have textbook discussions later on because I know what's going to happen if we proceed. So I don't want that to happen and we'll see and we'll, we'll come up with more innovative ideas. I've been working on many things. We'll come up with more innovative ideas so that you can uh, get the subject which is required in a more efficient and easier manner possible. So having few ideas, one of them we implemented previously and we'll have this uh, fun fest again the next week. Because last week we had it, we'll plan it for every 15 days so that we can have that momentum going on and so that we can have even more fun in the process, right? And if possible, uh, we'll see whether if, ca if I can handle another uh, kind of such session in this week. I'll let you know as soon as possible. Right. And also, I'll distress myself in, in this one day or two days available. And I'll come up with more ideas and also uh, give you some tips like how to distress. I've been trying that. And also, I got a few mails regarding how to avoid using smartphones. So I've been working on these topics. I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as possible, right? So enjoy your holidays. At the same time, make sure that you don't leave anything completely, right? Just decrease the pace if possible, or if you feel like saturated or stressed up, just take one or two day break. It's not going to alter or hamper your preparation for such. By the way, Pritika had an extended break of two weeks uh, thanks to her fever. So she is now energetic and enthusiastic and she can proceed now, right? So that time, I mean, you did not really have that extended period of break, but at least two or three days would do good. Depends, right? Even Abhishek, I remember Abhishek asking me this question previously, right? I feel stressed up. The thing which I told him is take a complete break for one or two days. Obviously, you'll come up with uh, renewed energy and enthusiasm, isn't it? Right, also MCQ discussion from today's topic, we'll have it as soon as possible. We'll in, I'll incorporate the MCQs from this topic also in one of the MCQ sessions uh, as soon as possible, right? So, see you all again. <laughs> I know, yes, I've gone through a mail, but I realized that I should go through that in detail before giving you a reply. So, I've just acknowledged you, but definitely... Uh, don't worry, uh, mails and all I can give you a reply by tomorrow itself because that's not really a, a stressful thing for me. In fact, I enjoy reading mails, especially whenever there is an issue. Like whenever you face any problem or something, I, I would love giving some solutions, some practically feasible solutions. I'll give you a reply as soon as possible, at least by tomorrow, okay? Right. So it's 10 15 we'll break then right so i uh, wish you a happy diwali enjoy the spirit of diwali right so love you all take care and no these are not silly mates it's all individual perception what appears to be silly for you might not be the same for me right so think that it's silly but these are the things which i have been asking are genuine practically faced problems by all aspirants so these are the things which teach me in fact because you're giving me a lot of information you say what your problem is so i'm understanding you all better much better isn't it so it's like a learning process even for me so it's a, in fact a challenge so it's uh, never consider that as silly uh, don't uh, stop yourself from asking me any questions assuming that it's silly or assuming that i would laugh at it no that never happens any mail 
no matter what kind of question or what kind of category it belongs to, I take it seriously because I know, I mean, you sending a mail, it means you're putting the effort to type and send. It means there is some genuine concern, isn't it? So I can understand that and I never consider that as silly bonus. So you can just eliminate that from your cortex, cerebral cortex. Yes, thank you so much for your lovely wishes and wish you all the same. See you as soon as possible. Right? Yeah. Bye. Love you all. Take care.